and I'm very happy to do these type of webinars more interactive. I don't mind stopping and asking questions and, and answering versus like me just talk. I really much rather it be interactive and making sure that you all are being able to discuss what we really want to discuss. I have my points, but I'm not perfect and I could be missing something. So please, this is interactive and, 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 and please do so. So quick Introduction again, officially, I am Kendra Nielsen-Miles. I am the executive director and founder of EDS Wellness. Uh, EDS Wellness is a newer nonprofit. However, it's really not that new. Uh, the work I've been doing in the community has been over 10, 12 years. Um, I've done guest speaking. I've done a ton of projects, conferences, books, things like that, uh, volunteering for other organizations. I've been working in this community since I got diagnosed. Um, my background is public health. Uh, I went to pharmaceutical sales and then medical sales after I was diagnosed and then just slowly got more involved in the community and then, you know, had done the work under EDS Wellness as an LLC before I went to officially nonprofit. So we're officially a newer nonprofit, but actually not that new. Uh, we focus on health education uh, programs and helping you all restore function and live well um, continuing medical education for providers, but really the programs that help you all help patients and caregivers or providers continue patients along the wellness or their journey, whether it's they're just starting or they want to learn more. It's really just about making sure that you don't feel alone, that you know that you have resources and help, even if we don't have all the answers, even if it's not developed yet, that we're listening and we're here to help. And um, there's not a whole lot of people focusing on health education programs, um, learning programs, different things. And I just wanted to fill a niche. I didn't want to recreate create a wheel and that's my expertise. And that's uh, what I went to school for. And it's also what was needed. Uh, we're still refining it. It's not perfect. Um, I love everything virtual, but I'm still refining it. So any suggestions, feedback is great. And with that, I'll let Tammy introduce herself real quick and then um, tell a little bit about EDS Wisconsin and how we started working together. And then we'll I'll just put up my slides and we'll just start talking. So go ahead, Tammy. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. So my name is Tammy Kazbab. I am the founder and president of EDS Wisconsin. Um, EDS Wisconsin was actually a dream of mine ever since I was young and, and even before I even knew what EDS was because um, I noticed that a lot of people in my family were sick all the time and they had pain and nobody really knew what was wrong with them. Um, in 2004, my mom passed away. She was 50 years old and she had never been diagnosed. And she had pain. They could never figure out the source. They accused her of drug seeking and stuff like that. Um, then once after I had my third child, I actually got a lot worse than I had been before that. And I was finally diagnosed with um, what used to be type 2 uh, mild classical type, which I really hated the mild, mild classical type because then the doctor said, oh, well, it's mild then. <laughs> I was like, no, it's not mild. So anyways, um, I'm kind of stuck between uh, diagnosis now. Um, I'm going, planning to get the classical type test soon. So I'm not really typed right now. But anyways, um, my goal is to, um, help people in my community and my state uh, by developing resources in different regions of my state. And hopefully, um, what I'm hoping is that I can develop a plan that can help other states to do the same kind of thing. Um, but for now, I'm working in my state, and I met Kendra at Wallapalooza. Was that just last year? <laughs> that, was, that was actually, I was just thinking, that was actually... It was nearly a year ago because at this time last year I was like furiously like getting everything ready. And, <laughs> oh my gosh, it was at the end of April last year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, end of April, and yeah, it's also important to announce to make sure that, um, you work with Dr. Bluestein as Dr. Bluestein's been a guest and she did the webinar and and yeah. we all just kind of worked very well together. You also work with John from EDS Awareness, which I. I think it's so important that people know that we all are, you know, working together and um, absolutely that's in critical and, and there's no one organization that has resources for everybody. It, it, we even at rare disease day, it was a great, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but even they were talking about that patient organizations, they call it adequate organizations. 
you know, there's not one that can do everything. And um, maybe they can if they're big enough and they have enough funding. But, you know, sometimes there's a competitive nature in, in nonprofits. It's kind of weird and it's kind of like you don't want to be part of it. But um, the point is to collaborate because we all work together. I'm not here to say that EDS Wellness has all the resources. I don't. If I think that you should go somewhere else and I can't answer it, I'm going to tell you. I'll send you to HMSA. I'll send you to wherever. Um, I might send you to Tammy. I might send you to the International Pain Foundation. Um, so I think that's important to recognize that if we don't have the answers, we don't have the resources, they might not be there. Maybe we can help, help find them, but there's we have no problem providing referrals or helping you find another path to go if we can't help facilitate it. Um, Tammy, do you have anything to add to that about your experience and what you're doing in, in Wisconsin? No, um, and, and I like that you pointed that out because it's so true. Like we, we really do need to be working together. Like not everybody has all the answers and we all fill different needs in different communities in different ways. And I mean, I think everything that you're doing is amazing. And you know, John from EDS awareness and all the people that he works with and Dr. Bluestein, I actually met her just before I met you last year. And, um, we, we just try to work together as much as possible. Yeah. And she, She's been a great collaborative force as well. And I think it's important to have our providers also help bring organizations together too. And yep. that's been great. She's been a great facilitator of working with kind of everybody. Dr. Chopra is the same way. All of the providers really are like that. They're just really spread thin. Um, so I also try to, I guess wellness tries to really focus on asking the providers, how can I help you help us? So I've done some projects with Dr. Claire Francamano to help her, um, other providers too. So I think it's important for us to also ask the doctors, like, what do you all need once patients are diagnosed? Or how can we help facilitate information? Or is there something that you're just saying all over again? Can we record it for you and have it available on a video so patients can watch it? I think asking the providers that help us is really critical too. And um, I don't think we do that enough. Um, I know I try to, but I'm not great at it. Um, I'm not perfect, but I have done a couple of projects just to help. Um, and it has helped, I think. Um, that's a lot of the resources that we develop. So it's not just continuing medical education and it's not just helping patients. A lot of the providers that really help us need help too. And, and they're so spread thin. And um, at the end of the day, we can educate doctors, but if they don't want to help us, they're not going to. So we're going to talk about that too, because we can't make them. So what do you do in that situation? So um, and there's a lot more of us getting diagnosed than there are doctors. So it's growing, but we have to learn how to manage that um, because we can't make somebody help us. They have lives and they're, they have their own people and, and they have personal issues and they have different reasons why or why not. They might not be open to education or, or want to help us. So we'll talk about that later too because um, it's important to just understand and then be able to move on. Uh, and sometimes it can be very hard to handle um, especially when you're just so desperate for help and maybe there's not somebody else there, but that's why we're here. So that's why we're doing this. Not that I'm going to have the perfect answer, but I have some ideas. Tammy, do you have anything to add real quick before I pull up my slides? Um, well, this month, actually, well, next month, March 24th, Dr. Bluestein and I are doing a presentation about um, handling appointment anxiety. Oh, <laughs> because, great. Yeah. Um, so we are hoping to have somebody to film that for us, and then hopefully we can get it like on our YouTube channel or something like that. But, but, but that was one of the huge things that I found um, once I started working with EDS Wisconsin is that so many patients, I mean, are so nervous about their appointments because, you know, what if the doctor doesn't believe me? What if they can't help me? What if they tell me I don't have EDS? And all these things. So. What if they change my diagnosis? Yeah, so we're going to handle all of that. I want to make sure that any questions you have, please put them in the Q&A. Um, we might not hit everything in my you know, presentation that I already had together, but um, it's, it helps me keep track because I have brain issues just like everybody else. And um, <laughs> let's truth be told, it's really about keeping my brain on track. Um, and but make sure you can also put it in the comments and i always make sure to read that and go through and, and answer questions as best as possible if i can't i'll try to help you find resources or tell you I, I don't know and we'll look for it so um and then tammy will be here to help facilitate she can also answer the questions on the side if needed so i'm going to share my screen right now and we'll just get started so thank you everybody for being here i hope this is helpful at least a little bit and if it's not, um, or if there's something we haven't, you know, answered, please give us feedback. Hold on, my husband's bringing me water. So, EDS Wellness runs out of my house. <laughs> um, this is what happens when you're a new nonprofit. Um, so, you know, there could be dogs barking, kids screaming. You never know. 
So um, it's taken me two years to get to this point and be as comfortable as I am now. I'm still figuring it out. You know, I mean, there was yeah. a lot that goes into it. It's video hosting, it's editing, it's internet. We had to bump up our internet. It's different mics. It's trying things. It's, it's a lot exactly. that goes into being able to do it well. And, and lighting. <laughs> yeah, and lighting. All these things that you don't think about. But I feel, you know, it's been a two year long, like in, in really investing in, and educating and how to do these things and offer these, but we're still learning. So, and there's Zoom is a great platform too. We didn't have something like this a couple of years ago. So thank you for being, everybody being part of it. Thank you, Tammy. You're always, I love that you're here and help. Um, so we'll just get started. Let's see. All right. uh, so who is EDS Wellness? We already went through that. Um, just a, a disclaimer, this presentation was the one that a PowerPoint that I put together when I did the webinar for um, Barbie Engel of the International Pain Foundation, and I had just updated some of the information on there because the diagnostic criteria had come out last year. This is also what I gave uh, to the EDSDC support group meeting. So there still might be some things that aren't perfectly updated. So just, I'm making that caveat, but I think it should be. Who I am, I already told you guys, I'm a certified health education specialist. That's basically the certification you, you get or you um, the exam you take after you graduate with a degree in public health and health education. I'm a 